I think the whole, I mean, mass media in the West want to see the situation as they want to see it, not as it is exactly. In the first period of the revolution, most of the people was waiting any cultural artist, uh, actors uh, to show up and to uh, participate with the people in the street in the demonstrations. When you describe it as a civil war, so it's just a matter between a family, let's say. So let's them do whatever they want to do. We have nothing to say. So we are pure, innocent. We are really good people. And those unknown backward people fight each other and we have nothing to do. But for the Syrians, as intellectuals, it's, it's a revolution. I and mean, you are part of it, inside it. I have a lot of friends, uh, they are still in Syria, and um, uh, Facebook or Skype, I talk with, uh, with him. And they told me it's when you, all the, the sound of weapons and uh, bombarding, all, all this, it's really, it's, it's really scary. So the cultural people, or the artist people, they are peaceful, and everyone knows that. And from the perspective of the Syrian regime, they would like to show the revolutors as they are terrorists. Even one of the themes of art is how to overcome the obstacles in writing or in painting or whatever kind of art. So this kind, it's different because, I mean, now to write when you are at risk. I mean, for a writer in the West, to be at risk is just to venture trying new styles, let's say. But for an artist in a country like Syria, I mean, creation is a kind of being dressed and life itself is a threatened. So you are not just, I mean, venturing in art and style, you are even venturing in the meaning of life and death with your own body physically. I think almost of artists in Syria, they um they try to surviving, like all the people. A lot of they have a weapon, so it's the creativity. The dialogue between the bullet and the pen, which is uh, almost surrealistic. But um, I think what's writing, for instance, and that's which is my interest, I mean, writing has something to do with, uh, with changing our way of seeing ourselves, our memory and our past. I'm talking about my generation. We ideologized in Ba'ath ideology, and uh, which is leading us for just have one God or one president or one, and the other it's hell or the other it's the evil. So I think it's the most important work, the intellectuals and arts. Art, I mean, addresses one person. And rarely it's for a mob or for a huge audience. I mean, if sometimes a poem or a painting can add something or change something in an individual. Let's just remember that we, we create the alphabet, we create many things before this last 40 years where, where the regime had been. So we, uh, our history, it's more, more older than 11,000 years. An open culture that we, if, that it's, it's really an open culture. It's meaning you can do what you, you want, you can, um, you can do what you believe. We would like to know the others. We are not rejecting the others. And we want them also to introduce themselves as they are, not as how we want them to be. So one of the topics now, I think, for a writer or an artist is meditating or contemplating this passage of time. This time which passed now for two years, we have now a kind of, when we remember the beginning of the revolution, you will see that there are many narrations. When you, let's say, I mean, in the Western tradition, when you, you read Robert Browning, The Ring and the Book, when there are 10 narrators, narrate the same story. Now in Syria, you have thousands of narrations of the same story. This, you, you, will, you will, where you are, is it a rumor or a fact, a truth, or this is in itself a piece of art. 
We don't need politics people to lead us. We, know, we need creative ideas. We, know, we need creative uh, people to, to gathering us. We don't need the propaganda or agenda or uh, yes, we have to do this and this is wrong and this is right. Actually, we are over, over this kind of uh, statement. different level. At the first I feel guilty because like my mother, my sister are still there, they are waiting for what? I don't know. Do we have other solution? No. Uh, what should I do? I don't know. But for the Syrian, some of us who survived, of course there is this secret guilt feeling that you survived and your family, your relatives, I mean are I mean, living under unbearable circumstances. Many of my friends, they die. They were filming, just as you, actually, with them cameras and they sniper, the sniper shoot him and they are dying now just because they are filming. It's peaceful of resistance, actually. It's peaceful attitude of resistance. Like we are not, we don't want to kill anyone. We are trying to show the reality or to take, document the reality. Look, look how, what is going on here. Most of these people die now. It's very difficult because you, you try to live uh, a normal life outside Syria. You ha it's like you have two lives um, in the parallel. Huh? You live, but you don't live. You go to a restaurant to drink a, a wine with your friend, but you said at the same, at the same time, it's not true. It's like a virtual uh, life. I mean, in the, now what happened during the last two years, I mean, it added too much, I mean, uh, to the Syrian culture. Of course, it's through, I mean, the gate of nightmare, let's say. I mean, you invent out of your pain, out of your fears. But this is, I mean, even part of the artistic achievement during the history of art. I mean, you cannot, I mean, easily, let's say, talk about, I mean, a happy art. I, I mean, cannot manage it. I mean, you know, in, in the Odyssey, I mean, in Homer, when Odysseus turned back and he asks the, the, the gods that why did you create misfortunes? And they answered him, so the future generations, what are they going to sing about? Mm -hmm. 